All right, let's talk some vitamins. So the reason that we're doing this workshop is we want people to understand why they should be taking supplements and understanding the, the mindset behind it that it's not to fix a problem from the outside. So a lot of times we have people who are wanting to um, get a, a healthier lifestyle, they wanna start to make changes, um, they wanna start to work off some of the medications that they've been taking, uh, but they start to use supplementation as another form of just symptom treating. And that's not what supplements are for. A, a supplement is here to correct a deficiency or remove a toxicity. It is not to just manage symptoms because in the end, if we're not figuring out what's causing a symptom, then it doesn't matter if we're covering it up, we're not getting down to the actual problem. And we have people look at supplements as they're this magic thing that should be making them feel a certain way. Um, and the reality is, is that if two people take a, a B complex, for example, so B vitamins are known to increase energy. And so we have people who are saying, well, I'm tired, so maybe if I take a B vitamin, then I'll start to have more energy. Well, number one, we need to figure out what is actually causing the fatigue. And if you have a true B vitamin deficiency, then you will see an increase in energy when you start to take that supplement because the supplement is actually correcting a deficiency which was causing the fatigue. So say you have two people who decide to start taking B vitamins and they both have chronic fatigue. Well, one person starts to have an improvement in their energy and then the other person says, well, I'm still tired, this vitamin didn't work. Well, the reality is, is that the person who experienced an increase in energy had a deficiency that was corrected. The person who was taking the, the B vitamin that didn't have a deficiency had no improvement in energy because the cause of their chronic fatigue was not a B vitamin deficiency. And so I, I just kind of sitting on that for a second, I hope <laughs> that that you know, helps us leading into this workshop to understand that a supplement is not there for this magic fix. It is there to correct a deficiency or to remove a toxicity. And so we're gonna get into when supplementation is appropriate because in the end, the majority of our nutrients should be coming from our food. And so we've gotta start making those changes, but there are some problems with our current food supply that we're taking in. Yeah, so they've been looking at this since World War II, really. They've been assessing where our food relates and to making sure Americans or consumers are getting the things they need to be getting from their diet. And the, uh, the nutrient content of US food supply was started during World War II and it was done to make sure that we were getting everything that we need to from food. Uh, they've been doing this ongoing annually. It's a report that's put out and they've actually found now there was a study done uh, that looked and found that it actually isn't going in the right direction. You know, they, this, this study now uh, is used to see where foods need to be enriched or fortified. So when you see like fortified grain, they're adding B vitamins or minerals. Uh, they're adding other things. It helps to establish the recommended daily allowance, the calorie breakdown with fats, proteins, carbs, other things. Uh, and this study was meant initially and it served a great purpose for us. But now they're finding that through you know several different variables that the things that we're eating aren't as nutrient dense as they once were. An example being oranges. There was a study done that actually found that uh, one orange that our grandparents would have eaten growing up would actually take eight oranges for us to consume now to get the same levels of vitamin A. So the nutrients that we're getting from food aren't as great as they once were and we're fortifying our food with things that are also blocking the absorption of other vitamins. They're finding now that even some of the things that we're using in the food supply are becoming problematic. So what we're gonna go through today is uh, really going to lay out where our food supply creates holes in our nutrition, how we help to fill those gaps, and some other specifics that we can get into to correct, uh, to correct deficiencies or address specific toxicities. And when we look at chronic disease right now, heart disease and cancer are on the rise. We know it's not a secret that we're not doing great as 
health wise in our country. And so when we look at chronic disease, there's a reason that the chronic disease is created. Um, and the majority, unfortunately, of chronic diseases are lifestyle related right now. So that means that we have the ability to correct them or cause them. And when we look at this tied into specific nutrient deficiencies, something like cancer, it, it's cancer is associated with DNA damage. And there's actually certain nutrients, for example, iron, zinc, folate, um, uh, vitamin B9, B12, B6, uh, vitamin C, these deficiencies all have been shown to cause DNA damage. DNA damage is a precursor for something like cancer. And so when we have these chronic nutrient deficiencies, understand our body is in favor of survival and it tries to figure out a way to keep going, but short term the body can adapt. But when you start to go five, 10, 15, 20 years with these chronic nutrient deficiencies, the body can't function the way that God created it to. And then we start to see these problems develop. And so disease is something that we have to look at. There's always a cause to it. And we need to make sure that we're getting the right fuel in our body or we're gonna be creating these diseases to come out. Uh, some of the other chronic diseases, um, they've actually, obesity, um, there's a link between obesity and vitamin D deficiency, um, which vitamin D is a, a hormone, is extremely important for immune function, um, but they've actually found that about 42% of the population is vitamin D deficient now. Um, diabetes, um, they've also linked diabetes with vitamin D deficiency. Um, osteoporosis, we look at, oftentimes it's calcium that we're told to take, um, but that one is also tied back into a vitamin D deficiency because you actually need vitamin D to get the calcium into the bone. And so I have a lot of people who are told to take a calcium supplement, but yet it's actually the vitamin D deficiency um, that's creating a problem. And, and you know that oddly enough, you know, talking about the importance of vitamin D, it's the reason that we have a, a standard amount when, we, when we're measuring through blood work to make sure that our our vitamin D levels are at a certain level and that's going to help to prevent rickets, which was an issue with bone density. So, you know, all of that plays a huge role with one another and it's absolutely synergistic. Uh, some of the other problems when we look at uh, micronutrient or mineral deficiencies, which we're gonna be getting into what those are, um, but that can lead to chronic disease, um, like hardening of the arteries, uh, high blood pressure, uh, osteoporosis, diabetes, uh, cancer, and uh, auto, autoimmune or immune system dysfunction can also be created as a result of it. And so in the end, we've gotta put the right fuel in our body in order for it to perform the way that we need it to. So, you know, we've been talking and I love how this right now, when we look at some of the components that our bodies have to have, you know, there's, there's definitely a, an essential component with it. And, you know, we talk about fulfilling the five essentials to make sure that our body can heal and function the way that, was, the, the way that it was created to. When it comes to nutrition, there's absolutely essential components. And essential nutrients are things that the body has to have, vitamins, minerals, other things that it can't make on its own. Our body is brilliant at adapting and doing a lot for itself, but there are definite components that it has to have from the outside. And these are called essential components, like essential amino acids and certain vitamins, minerals that our body will not make, it has to have from our food. So just to slow it down a second, there are essential things that we have to get from our nutrition from the outside in order for our body to function the way that it was created. So it's extremely important that what you put, your choices and what you put in are gonna directly build health or cause disease. And what the initial study was looking at when we were assessing where our food stacked up in relation to the nutrients that we should be getting and we're actually getting was really to determine whether or not a varied diet, you know, healthy, healthy grains, uh, nuts, seeds, uh, varied fruits and vegetables, eating seasonally, uh, quality meats and proteins, would, if that would fulfill the requirement that our bodies needed for those essential components. And back then it did. And what we're finding now is more and more uh, 
we aren't eating as varied as we once were. If we wanted some, a certain type of fruit or vegetable, even if it's not in season, we have access to it. So we're creating deficiencies by not having a varied diet. And we're also finding that the nutrient density isn't what it once was. So how food breaks down, we, you know, a lot of people have heard the term macronutrients. There's a lot of you know, apps and other programs that you can use to track the breakdown of your calories within fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. That's the, the, the general breakdown of what you should be getting. But when we look at micronutrients, that's often an area of nutrition that's overlooked because we don't necessarily think about it. And it's the components that our bodies need in smaller amounts, but they're absolutely essential. And those would be the vitamins and minerals, really how those fats, proteins, and carbohydrates break down even further to make sure that we're satisfying the essential components that our bodies need, but can't make on its own. And so we want to get into some of those micronutrients um, and really what they're important for in the body. Uh, you know, what Zach was saying about people not varying their nutrition, I, I had a patient who, you know, came in and she was saying that she ate a banana every morning for like 20 years. And so I'm like, do you have any other fruits? No, I just like bananas. And so wonderful, you're, you're getting the nutrients that bananas have, but you're missing out on a lot of other nutrients because you haven't varied anything that you're doing. And so some of the nutrients, so vitamin A, um, this is actually um, important for maintaining healthy teeth, bones, soft tissue, mucous membranes, and skin. Um, oranges, carrots, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, these all have high amounts of vitamin A, um, and that's where the, the pigment comes from, that color. Um, carotenes, um, beta carotenes, um, these are gonna be a huge thing that comes from uh, dietary sources that we need to be taking in. Um, sweet potatoes, carriage, carrots, and spinach have these in it. Um, vitamin E, um, this is something, an antioxidant in the body. Um, this is gonna be important for red blood cells. Um, vitamin K, um, sunflower seeds, and almonds are a great source of vitamin E. Um, vitamin C, this is gonna be important for your teeth, your gums, um, and they've actually associated, which we're gonna get into, uh, vitamin C deficiency with cancer. Um, but vitamin C is in citrus fruits, bell peppers, uh, Brussels sprouts, and so we don't we don't just get vitamin C from oranges. Yeah, you know, that was something that I'm, I'm glad you hit on because that's definitely when people hear vitamin C, like oh, I got an orange, or you know, I'll get the uh, emergency packet from the grocery store. You can get vitamin C from a ton of different sources. Citrus fruit actually isn't the greatest source of vitamin C. Uh, you get it better in higher quantities. It's more absorbable through specific vegetables like like Brussels sprouts. It's a, a great source of vitamin C. So again, why we need to be varying our nutrition. Um, so uh, B1, uh, this helps convert nutrients into energy. So you can see these micronutrients um, all work synergistically together and they all help us to get the most out of our nutrition. Um, so B1 is found in whole grains, meat, and fish. Uh, B2 um, is a critical role for energy production in the body, um, cell function, fat metabolism, and this is found in organ meats, eggs, and milk. Um, and so a lot of people stick to the same meats that they're doing, you know, the and same cuts of organ meat. meats. <laughs> organ meats are not something that people typically venture into, but there's a lot of great ways that you can make them. Um, but you get different nutrients from different, different types of meat, different parts um, of the animal as well, um, which is gonna be really important that we keep variety. That's one of the biggest reasons that meat has been associated with problems is because we just, we don't, we don't eat the different varying nutrient it's, parts of it. The term with eating meat uh, would be eating nose to tail. So you're eating the muscle meat, the, the parts that we're familiar with and comfortable with eating in our country, and then the other non-familiar parts, the organ meats that are going to be a huge source of amino acids, other, other B vitamins, um, and, and tons of different minerals. You should fly through the rest of the B vitamins. Um, so finishing this out, B3, um, this is gonna be um, in uh, meat, salmon, leafy greens, beans. Uh, B6 is gonna be in liver. Um, again, organ meats, starchy vegetables and fruit. Uh, B9 is important for cell division. This is found in beef, spinach, asparagus. Um, and then B12 for uh, metabolic function. And so this is where people get B12 shots for the, the boost of energy. Um, but again, that 
if you have a specific B vitamin or B12 deficiency, um, we got to figure out what's causing that. Um, but this is going to be found in clams, fish, meat. Um, and so the B vitamins, all they're found in similar foods, they work synergistically yeah. together. And so I don't like somebody is like, well, I'm taking just this one B vitamin because they all, how God put them in nature is they're found together and they work synergistically, meaning they all help each other um, in being the best at, or being able to, to do what they were created to do in the body. So if you are taking a B supplement, a complex is one of the most important things that you should be doing. Yeah, so taking specific, specific B vitamins, thinking that we're going to offset a specific symptom can be somewhat misguided because you don't know if you're deficient in that. So the best way to make sure that you're addressing a specific deficiency would be to take something like a quality multivitamin or a B complex. It's gonna have a ton of what your body needs in the appropriate ratios. Uh, some of the micronutrient breakdown to get into the minerals uh, would be like calcium, which is going to be huge for bone density. Spinach, you can get calcium in green leafy vegetables. We've yep. been told that you need to drink milk in order to get calcium. That's actually not one of the best sources of calcium. Sardines are actually the best source. And <laughs> we, we have to try to trick some family members that won't be named into eating sardines, Myself. but it's a huge way of getting, <laughs> making sure you're getting quality calcium. Uh, phosphorus, which is huge for bone, uh, bone health and cell membranes. You can get from salmon, yogurt, and turkey. Magnesium, actually, it helps to moderate over 300 different enzyme reactions in the body, and it is a huge, huge overly looked new, um, specific micronutrient or mineral that we are as a culture very deficient in. Uh, you can take specific supplements. You can also get them from uh, healthy whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Iron, uh, again, you can get through beans and spinach, but it's going to be huge for supporting oxygen. It's going to be big for energy as well. Uh, zinc, copper, potassium, all of those are going to help with cellular integrity, uh, making sure that your body is able to regulate as it needs to. Sodium, which has been given the worst reputation for increasing your risk of, of heart disease or heart attack. Uh, sodium is not a, a, a problem, um, especially if you're getting a quality, a quality source of sodium, like a sea salt. The issue, and again, it comes down to the same thing with even certain types of sugar, is not the, the thing that you're eating, it's the process of refining it that creates the problem. So refined table salt absolutely can be problematic. Pink sea salt, natural sea salt, is not going to be an issue with creating a risk of, of having a well, heart attack. And, and to go into to why that is, is because when we extract just one component, it doesn't work the way that nature intended. And so when we eat the, the, you know, the Himalayan sea salt, Celtic sea salt, when we eat these, they're all minerals are found together in balance. Right. And so your body utilizes it appropriately. But when we just extract and we have this refining process for a general table salt that people have been consuming, yes, that does lead to a major imbalance in your body because we have this one mineral becoming so dominant. But when you take it in in combination, it's extremely important. So we've had more thyroid problems um, because we're having mineral deficiencies um, and, and people have been cutting out salt, but you actually need need it in its right form. Yeah, the thing that we would cut out would be the refined salt. Natural salt, sea salt, is going to be beneficial because it's gonna have the minerals all associated along with the sodium. Uh, selenium, molybdenum, iodine, all are huge for protecting the thyroid. It helps to offset oxidative damage. Uh, all minerals that are absolutely essential that we're creating deficiencies in because we are going more for processed foods that are refining these amazing nutrients into these specific isolated components to fulfill a, a recommended daily allowance. And so we've gotten the information that we had access to during World War II, we've taken it too far and we're refining all of the beauty of how things were created to fulfill a requirement that we have. And so what we want you guys to see is that the majority of your nutrients should come from eating healthy foods. You've got to venture out and getting variety into your nutrition. You've got to be eating different things um, to make sure that you're getting the wide um, array of different micronutrients that your body needs. But we're going to talk about there's there are supplementation that 
there's supplementation that's necessary now because we've depleted a lot of these micronutrients out of our food supply. And so we're gonna talk about the, the you know, nutrient dense issues that are now being created or nutrient poor issues um, that are being created um, and what we need to do for it. So looking at how the other reasons that we're not seeing uh, our bodies being able to have the things that it needs from our food really comes down to low or poor nutrient content in the foods that we're consuming. Uh, nitrogen and other other essential components in soil that are helping to build up the, the vitamin and mineral content and the things that we were eating have become much more depleted than they once were. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with agricultural practices, whether it's not rotating crops, uh, pesticides, which you know, fulfilled a specific purpose, uh, but have become widely overused and the types of pesticides now being used on, on foods are causing cellular damage. So it's disrupting the gut and we're seeing absorption issues, uh, pollution, just because we have so many humans now doing different things that are creating environmental pollution, uh, pollutants, uh, and cooking and preparation fac uh, factors also come into play. You know, raw vegetables are going to be more nutrient dense than a drastically overcooked vegetable, um, and that's just the way it is. When we heat certain things up, enzymes change, nutrient density changes, and our body's ability to absorb those things also changes. Now, there are benefits to consuming cooked vegetables versus raw vegetables, especially when we're talking about overall gut health. But when we look at specific nutrient density, how we're preparing these foods also have a huge factor in it. Um, and, and really briefly, the other component is the toxicity issues that we have. So, um, you know, Zach mentioned the agricultural practices. We have now a lot of the, uh, the, the pesticides and fertilizers that we're using, um, it creates this major imbalance. And so one thing, for example, um, the FDA actually warned about um, mercury and it's called methyl mercury. Um, so mercury naturally occurs in the environment. Um, and so it's gonna be found in certain levels, um, but it's been increasing because of air pollution. Um, and so these chemicals that we're creating is causing an increase in this. Um, and so they actually found that methyl mercury can be found in higher concentrations in fish um, because of the, the buildup and the, the rainfall can actually start to create more of that polluting the waters. And so we're now finding that, you know, the foods that are supposed to have these certain nutrient components aren't having what they should because the, the animal itself or the plant itself isn't getting the right minerals because of the toxicity side of things. So that also comes down into, before we you know, change gears into talking specifically about new, uh, supplements and what to look for, the importance of if we're consuming animal products, making sure that we're getting the absolute best quality that we can get uh, because of that law, that bio, toxic bioaccumulation, what our what our foods are eating, you know, their food, whatever it's exposed to, builds in the cell, and it's going to disrupt our body's ability to absorb because of a toxicity component. Some of the other components that will create nutrient deficiencies have a lot to do with the self-inflicted things that we're we're creating by what we're eating, the poor diet. You know, when you look at uh, things that are gonna be high in sugar, refined sugar or grains, damaged, processed, uh, you know, industrial type fats, like canola oil or hydrogenated oils, soybean oil, uh, processed foods that are gonna have artificial sweeteners and dyes, all of these things are gonna create an inflammatory response in the gut that's absolutely gonna limit our body's ability to assimilate the nutrients that we're taking in. Even if we're eating, you know, a, a good healthy spinach salad with a ton of vegetables, you know, we, we may be limiting our body's ability to absorb those things because of the inflammatory oils that we're using with the dressings. Uh, there was that they've actually, uh, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics did a study and they found that more than two thirds of Americans are actually eating less than one or two servings of fruit and vegetables a day, which is mind boggling to me that, you know, we're, we're not eating more than maybe just a handful or, or si almost 70% of Americans are eating just maybe one handful, like an apple or a banana. And that's it when it comes to getting fruits and vegetables. 82% um, do not want to give up the foods that they like. 62% uh, say that they have no time to track their diet or even be concerned with what they're eating. Think about that. More than half, 62%, 
have zero concern and they say that they just don't have the time to worry about it. 60% say that they uh, prepare their meals or they want to prepare their meals in less than 15 minutes. And 38% say that they, don't, they have no leisure time to get actual physical activity. So we are a culture of wanting what we want when we want it and we don't want to put a whole lot of effort into it when we want those things. So food manufacturers have answered that by processing the crap out of things, making food incredibly convenient, but terrible for us when it comes to making sure that we're getting what we need to get. And you know, this is important. If we want something different for our lives, we have to do something different. And so, you know, we have to just get to this point that we accept that it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to make these changes, um, but it's going to get easier once you start to implement it. But think about, so, you know, Zach was saying it, a lot of people aren't taking that much time to get the right nutrients in. If it takes now a child eating eight oranges to get the same amount of nutrition from one orange years ago, it's not enough to say, well, they ate an apple a day. Like that's not enough anymore. <laughs> We've got to be doing so much more to be proactive and getting our kids to have the right nutrition because this is the sickest generation. We're seeing the kids are now expected to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. And so these habits, if you have anything to do with the younger generation of kids, not only for yourself, but these changes have to be made to make things different for them so they don't grow up in this state of chronic disease. Um, the micronutrients as well, uh, you know, we, uh, micronutri micronutrients are important if we are having anti-nutrients that we're taking in. So sugar, you know, briefly kind of went through that, but when we're eating a lot of processed sugar, it actually leaches more nutrients from our body to process it and it doesn't put anything into it. So basically we have these empty calories. What that is is we're taking something into the body that does no nutritional benefit to us and actually causes uh, and expand, uh, using energy to actually process and break it down. So that's considered an anti-nutrient. So kids are not only not getting the right nutrients, but then they're having a ton of anti-nutrients coming in as well. Yeah, so when we look at some of the other factors that are going to create specific deficiencies, there absolutely is, aside from the lifestyle component, a genetic component. And it's absolutely something that we can address and overcome. Uh, but when we talk about genetics, we always look at it through the lens of just because your family history says this doesn't mean that that's a guarantee for you. It just means you have to work harder to offset it. So when we look at how your genes are going to affect nutrient deficiencies or how it's going to affect your body's ability to uh, make sure that everything is functioning the way that it should from the things you're taking in. Uh, a specific example would be an MTHFR gene mutation where uh, a body or a person has an inability to process certain types of B vitamins. There's also a couple other factors that would help to make sure that, or that need to be satisfied to make sure that they're getting what they need to and they're assimilating certain B vitamins, but they found that that specific genetic uh, hand-me-down, so to speak, is something that will create a toxicity factor with synthetic forms of, of B, vitamins, uh, B vitamins, specifically folate, looking at folic acid. If you have that issue, you know, there's a lot more problem with processing and eliminating folic acid, which could actually create a toxicity if you have that MTHFR problem. And, and so we need to make sure that we're we do have control over things. And so if we have these um, you know, genes that have been passed down to us and we, we may have a genetic mutation, it just means that we have to do more to make sure that we're getting the right nutrients in and avoiding toxicity. So somebody who has uh, you know, a gene that makes it um, them less able to process toxins, then they can have the same exposure as somebody else, but they're gonna get disease because their body has a harder time processing and breaking down uh, the toxicity that's there. And so they've actually found though that you have the ability to turn on or off genes. And so there's a component that we actually have control over it. So you know what, if you have a lot of family history of heart disease or cancer or autoimmune issues, whatever it is, that means that you can't sit back and not do anything. You've got to make sure that you're making the right decisions to make sure that the genetic expression can change with you. And you can actually alter what is passed down to future offspring by making the lifestyle changes for yourself. So hopefully that's that's really empowering to you. Yeah. So some of the specific lifestyle changes that can be made easily, we teach in office 
through the five essentials, making sure that one, our body and brain is communicating as perfectly as it could through core chiropractic, making sure we're taking in quality nutrients that our body has the ability to absorb is going to fall back on the, the chiropractic component, but we need to be taking in the right things. Uh, min minimizing stress, having the right mindset are the, the correct approach to health, satisfying the genetic requirement we have for movement and exercise by oxygenating the system and then minimizing what we're exposed to. So all of these things, absolutely go hand in hand so whether or not you have the genetic predisposition for something or a problem assimilating certain vitamins by fulfilling or satisfying the other areas with the five essentials it makes it irrelevant and you don't have to worry about that it makes sure that your body can do what it needs to do by functioning the way the way that it was created to function and so we want you to remember within they're called essentials for a reason you can't neglect one area. You know, if you like working out, but you think you can eat whatever you want and eat like crap, we look at the essential that you're neglecting is what's gonna kill you. Yeah. The essential you're, that you're neglecting is what is gonna cause disease in your life. And so, you know, we look at, we've gotta be focusing on each area of All our- All right, so camera died. <laughs> so we're gonna pick back up. Um, when we look at moving forward when it comes to your health, if you've spent years having you know, chronic disease or not moving in a good place with your health, number one, you gotta change your nutrition and start to make the right changes moving forward. But remember that it takes time for the body to correct what has built up over the years. So if your body has been forced into an adaptive state because of nutrient deficiencies or toxicity issues or whatever it was, it takes some time to metabolically get rebooted. And so what we need to do is make sure that we're correcting the deficiencies and removing the toxicities that have built up over possibly 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And, and so it, it's for me, you know, I, I still, I've gone more years in my life that I've damaged my health than I've actually been moving towards, you know, restoring it and living a, a good life. and. Uh, so I have to be patient still with there's things that I need to be correcting on an ongoing basis. But you need to know which supplements are the best version for you to take. So when you're getting supplements directly from us, you know that we've done the research in making sure that anything that we're selling meets the standards that we're gonna talk about. If you don't have access to us or you're getting your supplements somewhere else, uh, it's fine as long as you're taking quality supplements. So some of the things that you want to look for is one, making sure that it's third party verified. Uh, the standard that we keep in office is that it's GMP certified, which means good manufacturing processes. And it's certified by somebody that's not the manufacturer. Uh, that's huge when it comes to supplements because it's an industry that is pretty much unregulated. So companies can say something is in there that isn't, they've actually found that you know, certain vitamin stores uh, and, you know, and big chain stores that were selling their branded supplements had none of what was on the label. Uh, so It was basically like sawdust that you were buying? Yeah, so some of the things that you're taking for a supplement should be there. And when it's uh, third party verified or GMP certified, that's ensuring that the label is accurate and true. Uh, one of the other things that you wanna be looking for is that it's NSF certified, and that's essentially a, an organization that makes sure that the standards for manufacturing are clean, they're, they're, they're safe, and they're not going to have uh, questionable processes. Basically, it's being manufactured in a facility that is not somebody's garage. You shouldn't be taking supplements that are made by a guy on the street corner. You wanna make sure that the things you're taking are at pharmaceutical standards and they're clean and pure and they're, they're not gonna have any other uh, contaminants. potential contaminants with them. Uh, the problem with that is the other huge things that you need to be looking for. So GMP certified, NSF, uh, NSF certified are great, but you wanna make sure that the manufacturing process doesn't have artificial ingredients, artificial dyes, uh, artificial flavoring, uh, and other, other chemical additives that are going to create a toxicity component. It's gonna limit your body's ability to assimilate and absorb the nutrients you're taking in. You also wanna make sure that it's not gonna be inflammatory. So some of the things that you wanna be looking for is that there's no artificial colors, no artificial sweeteners, uh, there's no maltodextrin, uh, it doesn't have 
hydrogenated oils uh, like soybean oil or canola oil. And, and the reason that manufacturers do this is to create a standard look for the pill. Uh, I can think of a lot of one-a-days uh, or specific multivitamins that all look identical. And it's done because people want to take the same thing. They want it to taste the same way and they want it to look exactly the same every single time. So the manufacturer does that by adding artificial colors or other additives to it. Well, and, and how this is really important. So my dad was actually taking a vitamin D supplement. And so, you know, we found a good brand that he had been taking because um, he had been actually tested. He had a deficiency in it and he was doing really well. Um, and he ran out of it and then ran to the store that didn't have the brand that we had talked through. And so he just grabbed one that was there. Well, he started taking it um, and he, you know, called me and said, you know, I'm starting to have like knee pain and joint pain since I started taking the vitamin D. Do you think the vitamin D is causing that? I said, the vitamin D isn't causing that. I said, you had a deficiency, so your body, the, the vitamin isn't creating the, the pain that you're experiencing. I said, which, which one are you taking? And um, you know, he showed me a picture of the front of it. I said, no, 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 turn it around. Send me a picture of the label, um, the other ingredients that are listed in it. He said, it's just vitamin D. That's what the uh, nutrition label said but it was the other ingredient section that we needed to look at. The inactive ingredients, that's the problematic area for people with supplementation. And so it had uh, two different artificial dyes in it. It had maltodextrin, it had uh, two different inflammatory oils in it. And so it was all the inactive filler ingredients that were actually creating inflammation in his body and causing joint pain. So. I was like, throw that away. Don't even continue taking it. Um, you know, and, and that's the problem is we wanna make sure that if you're spending your money on a supplement, number one, you should be getting a benefit with it, not wasting your money, but also not paying for something that's destroying your health or being destructive. So he actually bought something that was creating damage in his body, not building health, but actually directly causing problems. And so it's extremely important, the brand and the form of supplement that you're taking. So we classify supplements in office in two different, two different uh, categories, so to speak. Core supplementation, things that are good for general use, everyday use, uh, would address a specific need and make sure that we're not, the specific need that it would address would be making sure that we're not creating any deficiencies or we're addressing specific deficiencies in the things that we're eating. Then there's other specific supplementation that's gonna be based on your medical history or your health history. Uh, both of those categories that we have in office, uh, you know, they serve a specific purpose. The core supplementation would be things that, you know, Aaron and I take daily or the supplements that we use with our kids. And then the specific supplementation that would be addressing health history would be specific to us individually. Uh, However, both of them are, or both categories are vital and they should be approached as such. So the, we're gonna get into the supplementation that we use, uh, the supplements that we use, the things to look for. Uh, you were nice in not saying the types of oils and not outing the company, but you know, if we have the, the neon green bottle with the yellow label, flip it over to the back and look to make sure that there's not soybean oil or corn oil. Both are highly inflammatory. And when it comes to manufacturing standards and farming standards, those are two types of oils or two crops that are very heavily genetically modified. So that's a whole other issue that we're not gonna get into, but types of oils that are gonna be in something like vitamin D or a fish oil, uh, you know, the, the vitamin E oils are gonna have those mixers that are gonna dilute the type of oil that you're getting and they're going to create inflammation so if you have ingredients or if you have supplements at the house currently flip over on the back ignore what the label says for the values look at other ingredients or inactive ingredients and look to make sure that there's no corn oil or soybean oil and if there is you can throw them right in the garbage because it's going to cause more inflammation and it's going to do a lot more a lot more harm than good so we have if you guys know in our office we have our drug freedom can when you know patients go back for their follow-up visits with their doctor and their doctors are able to take them off medication um, they are able to throw that in our drug freedom can um, we also have toxic supplements that people throw in there yeah. um, that they're not taking anymore because they're causing more damage and a lot of times those people were taking the supplements to address a specific symptom and once their body was functioning as it should through specific chiropractic care 
that symptom went away and it had nothing to do with the supplements that they were taking for years. But for us, the core supplementation that we're gonna be talking about would be things like a B complex. It's going to have a specific balanced ratio of all B vitamins. It's not one specific like B12 to address energy. Uh, it would have all the B vitamins in an appropriate ratio. The other added benefit from getting the supplements that we use in office is that the B vitamins are specifically activated. They're methylated. So for B12 as an example, it would have methylcobalamin rather than cyanocobalamin, which would be a two different types of B12 that are gonna be used and assimilated completely differently based off of you individually. Uh, the other thing that's specific in B vitamins that you wanna make sure you're looking at, and a multivitamin in general, is that it doesn't have folic acid. Uh, that also creates a toxicity if we have a genetic issue with assimilating uh, the, the folic acid, and we wanna make sure that it's a natural form of folate already activated. So it would be MTHF or methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is a mouthful, but that's specifically what you want to look for when you're taking a B complex. And I realized that we're gonna create a Where's Waldo when it comes to supplementation and going into the store and finding what you need specifically. So if you don't come in office for supplements, we've actually made it super easy. You can go to boldcityhealth.com click the online store button, and then we have every supplement that we sell broken down into core supplementation, and then symptom or health specific supplementation that would look at detox specific or estrogen detoxing, kid supplementation, uh, and gut repair. Those are the, the common areas that we address with supplementation in office. But to get back into a little bit with the core supplementation, a, a great multivitamin is absolutely essential. It's going to also have, aside from the B vitamins that you need, all of the minerals that are vitally important for daily function. It'll have vitamin D, it's gonna have vitamin E, so it's gonna have your water solubles like vitamin B and vitamin C. It's gonna have A, D, E, and K that are fat soluble in appropriate ratios. It's going to have minerals like selenium, uh, calcium, magnesium, molybdenum that are gonna help the cells function the way that they need to. Uh, other really great essential core core supplementation that we use is a good protein supplement. And I realize that a lot of you guys listening or watching may think of you know, core supplementation and not necessarily think of a protein supplement as something that would be a core essential, but it absolutely is because it's gonna have the amino acids necessary for you know, cellular repair and bodily functions. It's going to have you know, specific minerals, whether it's a plant protein, whey protein, or a collagen protein that are gonna be exactly what the body needs from a, a soft tissue repair standpoint. Uh, you know, we have Max Fit, which is a supplement specific for bringing down cortisol and stabilizing blood sugar. It's also gonna help to support you know, daily functions with metabolism and digestion. Our green supplement, which is like 11 supplements or 11 vegetables, like 11 servings of fruits and vegetables in a small like two teaspoon so, powder. The green supplement is really cool. So that is gonna be basically helping with the probiotics for gut repair. It helps to get a ton of micronutrients in, so kind of functions as a multivitamin. Um, and it also is gonna help with uh, certain micronutrients that help with detoxing in the body. So it helps your body to consistently work on um, removing anything that we're exposed to on a consistent basis. Big thing with both protein supplements and green supplements is that you wanna make sure that the type of protein you're getting is quality. So, for example, a whey protein or a collagen protein needs to come from 100% grass-fed cows, 100% grass-fed, grass-finished, that is hands down the most important part. Uh, you wanna also make sure that they're not sweetening it with artificial sweeteners like sucralose or aspartame. That's gonna be the biggest problematic or problem that you would run into with buying something from a big store. So if you're, you take a protein supplement, turn it over and look at the ingredients in there. Yeah. And if it has those artificial sweeteners in it, um, that is something we don't wanna be using, and make sure that you're not using soy as well, yeah. not using soy protein. So if we're using a plant protein, we, wanna, we want to get something that's a mix, uh, like a hemp seed, there's savvy seed, uh, there's also gonna be certain brown rice proteins and other, other plant-based proteins that are gonna be far more beneficial than a soy protein versus 
the combination or the mixture. It's again, it's adding variety to make sure that we're not uh, having or creating specific deficiencies. With greens, a uh, powdered greens mix, uh, there you'll, you'll see a lot of times like specifically chlorella or specifically spirulina. The benefit of getting a max green supplement, the one that we keep in office, is that it's going to have chlorella, spirulina, it's going to have alfalfa and other greens along with it. Again, going back to that 11 servings of different fruits and vegetables that are gonna be super high in, in chlorophyll to help with uh, the body on a whole different level with toxicity. Uh, some of the other things that are core for us would be uh, CoQ10, trace minerals, and D3. Uh, we're fortunate to live, and most of you guys watching, to live in Florida so we can get exposure to sun uh, you know, on a daily basis. However, if we're inside most of the day, we live up north, uh, we aren't getting outside with our bare chest or top of our, our head exposed, and top of head means no hair blocking it, we need to supplement with, uh, with vitamin D. In the summertime, it's less because we do generally get more exposure to sunlight. In the wintertime, we need to take more. Minimum for adults is 5,000 IUs in summer and 10,000 IUs in the wintertime. Uh, the best way to make sure that you're assimilating that is to have it paired along with a good healthy oil. So a lot of times like a coconut oil or a, an MCT, a medium chain triglyceride or probiotics. So with the D3 we keep in office, it's gonna have 5,000 IUs of D3 and 50 billion active cultures of probiotics that are gonna make sure that your body is taking in and assimilating everything that it needs to from that vitamin. So with vitamin D, when you get routine blood work done, ask your doctor to run it. Um, yep. There are more doctors who are running this consistently because we're <laughs> seeing a huge deficiency. Um, but make sure that you ask them to run your vitamin D levels. And we want to be between 80 and 100 is optimal levels. Yep. So it, you'll see on the blood test if it's like, I think most labs are about at 30, they'll say that it's not deficient, um, but it's not optimal levels. It's just not deficient. And so you want to be 80 to 100 and you got to be doing a minimum of 5,000 to maintain levels. So if it's deficient, then we've got to be doing higher doses of that to bring it up. So the way that you really think through what supplements do I need, you know, I, I think about this week, I've been outside maybe one time, even though it's beautiful out, I've actually only been in the sun one day this week. So I've got to make sure that I'm taking a vitamin D supplement because I'm not getting, it's, I need to be in the sun in order to make that. And so I'm not doing it. So I have a deficiency that's being created. I'm creating interference. And so I need to be taking a supplement to correct it. Um, I am working still on changing uh, my perspective with eating vegetables. Um, I grew up not eating vegetables and so um, I need to be getting more of those in and getting variety. But a greens mix is a great way for me to get a ton of micronutrients in. Um, I do a smoothie in the morning and like add a handful of spinach and that's a way to kind of hide greens in there. Um, and so I love that our kids um, will just like literally grab- Smoothie time. They'll just, you know, <laughs> grab vegetables as a snack. But I did not grow up wanting vegetables for snacks. So I have to still kind of change some of those habits. Um, but you know, for our kids and even for myself, I make sure if we have a protein, you know, supplement that can be a meal replacement that starts your day getting a ton of nutrients and you know with yeah. your kids, no matter how active and busy they are, you're starting getting all those nutrients. Um, and then the green supplement as well. So, you know, you can do a smoothie in the morning and a green supplement throughout the day. And you're, no matter what you're, if you're on the go with nutrition, you're gonna be helping to fill those nutrient gaps in there from a whole food source, not synthetic vitamins coming from a natural source. So just to get into and elaborate a little bit more on the smoothie for breakfast or the smoothie as a meal replacement, if you've been taking the same type of protein and using the same type of protein for months uh, and you haven't changed it up, it's good to alter it or change it. Uh, so if you've been taking, as an example, whey protein, it's totally fine to switch to a plant protein for a month or two and then go back or switch to a collagen or a bone broth protein. That variety is going to make sure that we're constantly varying the nutrients that our bodies are taking in. So you can add in a powdered, a powdered greens mix into a smoothie. You can do a ton of different, you can throw actual greens into the smoothie if you're using a blender. The big thing is varying it and making sure that you're changing it up. So if you've been taking, you know, like I said, whey protein, change it change it, get a plant protein, go to a collagen or a bone broth protein, add variety to the supplementation because 
you wouldn't be consuming those same things over and over again. And it's absolutely beneficial to add that, that variance into the nutrition. Uh, some of the other things, the, the, sup the specific supplementation that, that we use in office uh, and that we both use personally, right now, Erin's not doing any detoxing being that she's still nursing, but some of the specific supplementation that, that I do for detoxing or that our kids do, you know, we, we utilize the, the benefits of something like BioRay that's gonna have specific protocols and, and supplement packages that you can purchase that are going to support adrenals. It's going to make sure that cortisol and the cortisol is lower. So, so this is where when you're under more stress, so you know we look at if there's a time period good, there's good stressors, but when you're under a lot of stress, you need to support your adrenal glands. So think about if I'm in that state right now, I would need to do something like this. Right. So we would, if we were to support adrenals, you know, I mentioned MaxFit, which is going to be great for that. Loving Energy is going to be another huge component of the BioRay detox protocols that are going to support your adrenals. Uh, and you know, there's different levels. There's a trio, quartet, quintet that are going to add those different layers of detox support. So the trio would have the loving energy, it's going to have uh, NDF and cytoflora. It would have the liver support, NDF, which is going to pull heavy metals, and then cytoflora, which is going to support the gut. The quartet is going to add the adrenal support, which would have the liver, the liver support, the heavy metals support, gut support, and adrenal support. The quintet takes it one step further from there adds all of the other components, the liver, uh, adrenal support, gut support, heavy metals, and it also adds one more component with parasites, and that would add the artemisia and clove, which is going to be very specific to going through a full detox. And there's also, Byrae does a kids line. Right. So we, a couple times a year, um, we put our kids through a detox. And you know, I had a patient ask, you know, I, I'd mentioned that we were having the kids go through a detox right now, and they asked, do they have anything going on? I said, you know, they don't have any health concerns, but I'm not gonna wait until they do before I'm being proactive with supporting their bodies. So we look at, we've done, you know, right from birth, we've made sure that they're getting the right nutrients or certain things that are, is our line in the sand that we absolutely do not let into our home or they don't eat when we know the research behind how toxic certain things are. But I look at, I grew up very sick. I took a lot of medication growing up. Um, I took a ton of antibiotics, so I destroyed my gut bacteria. Um, I've actually been uh, aluminum, built up aluminum toxicity in my body. And so I grew those children in my body. And so unfortunately that was passed down to them. And so I know that I started them out with some interference of things that had built up to me. They actually found that it can, toxins can pass down. They found uh, three generations later. So, you know, things that my grandmother was exposed to are now, are still in my body. And so this accumulation, it's getting more, uh, more generationally becoming an impact. So we put our kids through the bioarray detox and it's been awesome um, to yeah. see them, you know, just, just thrive. Like they haven't had anything going on, but our, our oldest is homeschooled. And, you know, we noticed that he uh, has been focusing better and being able to get through his work um, a lot more efficiently. And so it helps with that mental clarity. Um, and our gut has so much to do with our mental and emotional state. And so, you know, it's really amazing for that, that digestive support. So. We're talking about a lot of really great supplements and I realize that you may want them. So again, just to recap where you go to access these, the supplements that you know Aaron and I keep in house, we literally have every one of these supplements on our page in stock. We may not take all of them at the same time or you know the same day, but if we're doing something specific, we absolutely use every one of these supplements that we have on our website. So again, go to boldcityhealth.com, click online store. You'll see every supplement that we've been talking about. Uh, and then for the rest of the week, so from the moment you're watching this till Friday the 29th at 1159, if you use the code vitamins with an S, vitamins 101 that'll give you 10% off uh, and you can access this and pick up in store there's a few items that like the bioarray line that we're able to actually ship directly to you but vitamins 101 by going to boldcityhealth.com 
accessing the online store and using that promo code at the checkout is going to save you 10%. And so, you know, we we have a lot of people ask us like, you know, what what we specifically do and so we hope that this kind of helps open up a little bit as far as like how we use supplements. Um, and we hope that this cleared up a little bit of um, just perspective wise of, you know, the the there's a time and place for them, um, but they're not an answer to fix things. In the end, again, we've got to go back to those five essentials and make sure that we're doing our part. The answer doesn't come from a quick fix in a pill. Um, that's never gonna build health. And so we've gotta be working on all the areas, but this can, these are great tools to get us out of the place that, you know, unfortunately we may have gotten to over years. And again, supplements are used to correct a deficiency or to remove a toxicity. They are not to just get rid of a symptom. And, you know, I hear people so all the time say, wow, this, you know, supplement fixed this, this supplement healed me. A supplement will never do that. Um, in the end, we've got to be looking at it from the right right perspective. So our action steps, your, your action steps and takeaways from this webinar, if we are supplementing, you're not getting it through a source or from somebody that has ensured that it's the best quality supplements that you can get. You have to do your homework, make sure that those ingredients on the back don't sound funny. If you have- Read yours that you have right now right. in your house start going through those. If there's anything questionable, bring them in office to us on your next appointment. If you don't have an appointment with us, you can also schedule a new patient consult from that uh, online store by going to boldcityhealth.com, clicking the online store button, and then still using that same code that's gonna add a discount, make the initial, making that initial consult uh, $56. So if you've never been here, uh, you're interested or intrigued by some of the information that we're talking about, you can also see what our patients have access to from a whole health standpoint. We can also get more specific for supplementation for you. If you have questions, uh, you can absolutely message us via Facebook Facebook or connect with us. Uh, we'd love to you know, answer any questions or concerns you may have before coming in. Uh, but then some of your, your action steps or your next steps uh, would be our Born, Born Bold Tribe, which uh, getting to that workshop yeah, is going to be huge. Yeah, I'm super excited about this. We're going to be starting um, uh, doing this every six weeks. We're going to be meeting in the office. And so the next um, workshop is going to be uh, Saturday, March 30th at 11 o'clock here in our office. And this is gonna be groups of moms or if you have any direct, um, you know, uh, Ability, contact. Yeah, contact if you are raising or helping. You know, I have a patient who is watching her grandson now. I'm like, this would be great for you to come to as well. If you're right. with kids and having an influence on them, um, get to this workshop. We're going to be, it's just going to be with other moms who are naturally minded, who are making these changes and getting support. So it's going to be just a really relaxed, open discussion setting. I'm going to be going through, you know, how we raise our kids, how we approach natural health, how we approach different challenges when they go to like birthday parties and there's things that they're exposed to. Um, and so so it's, it's gonna be a great way to connect with other moms who live this lifestyle um, and are able to just build each other up. So I'm excited about that. Um, so Saturday, March 30th at 11 o'clock. Your next event that we have is Essentials Foundation, which we go through specifics with nutrition, exercise, detox protocols, and how all of those fold into the five essentials, why they're so crucial, and next steps of changes that you can make nutritionally. The next one that we have, April 12th at 6 p.m., it's gonna be a webinar, so you can watch it the same place you're watching it here, uh, boldcity.media, and uh, it's, it's a great way to then also get plugged in with some of our other continuing education workshops like Shop Like the Doc, where we show you how to read labels. We tell you what to look for from a food standpoint. So we've talked about some of the things to avoid from supplements. Shop Like the Doc addresses what you should be avoiding when it comes to the things that we're eating or consuming. Uh, and then lastly, Coffee Talk, which has become very similar to our community dinner. You get access to Dr. Aaron 101, or one-on-one, -on -one, so if you have Dr. any- Dr. Aaron 101. I like that one too. <laughs> um, if you have specific questions, or if you have family members or friends that you need to get plugged into the office or hear a different approach that they can take with their health, Coffee Talk is hands down the best and easiest way to get your family members plugged in. One of the, the biggest things to remember is if what you're currently doing isn't working, try something else. Yep. 
and we get stuck in this pattern of doing the same thing over and over and we've got to break out of it at some point and so that coffee talk has become a great way if you have a somebody who you know in your life who has just gotten diagnosed or is going down a bad route with their health or they're frustrated they feel hopeless they don't know what to do invite them out it's a really I mean, we just hang out, there was coffee and tea, and we just logically talk through, you know, a different approach that we can start to take. So I hope you guys got a ton of information that you can apply to how you look at supplements. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, connect with us, facebook.com slash bold city. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys, love to help you out. We'd love to help you keep building health and moving towards it rather than away from it. Um, you can also follow um, either of us on Instagram. Um, we have our pages. Um, mine is a little bit more focused on raising healthy families. Um, Zach does a lot more of his exercise um, and he's the exercise and nutrition uh, guru in our family. Um, so it, you guys can follow us and you know we, we are posting different things to help you guys along the way. Um, but in the end, we're here to help guide you through it. I mean, we've made a huge transition in our own lives and you know it's constantly about educating yourself and getting the knowledge um, to do better than you were before. So at dr.aaronzovath, at zach.boldcity, you can connect with us on Instagram or Facebook. Love you guys.